Parenting. Pride and love, not just love. Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. Here we are on Signpost for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter and my dear Kristen Coggan is here. Hello darling. Hello. How are you? Well. That's good. <laughs> everybody, Kristen still dances when the music comes on. I do. Every time. <laughs> and then I laugh because you're dancing. Yes. So you're dancing and I'm laughing. It's Have a little jig. A, it's a jig dance, isn't it? Mm. Song. Okay everyone, so parenting, pride and love, not just love. Right. You sound excited. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting. I talk to a lot of parents and um, they, they love their kids, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and you know, th- the degree to which they can show their love it comes and goes and that's fantastic, that's fine. But um, what's really interesting is that um, when you're a parent, obviously there's the parenting side, discipline, right Mm. and then there's the love side which is giving them a big hug and letting them know that you're really glad to see them and that you love them and that's really great but there's this third area which is drum roll um showing how much pride you have in them the fact that you're proud of them Mm -hmm. and that i think it's really important that you're proud of them as individuals who they are who are they and to help them to learn who am i Right. Does that make sense? So, you know, children are relatively a, a blank canvas mm-hmm. and, and they really developmentally go through different stages and they need to work out, you know, am I okay? Who am I? And in that process, they have to develop a lot of self-talk. You know, mm-hmm. I am this sort of personality. These are my strengths. These are the things I find difficult. These are the things I've overcome. These are the mm-hmm. things I enjoy. Um, and... It's all those characteristics that make them a unique individual, but they haven't figured out what they are yet. And so the parent's ability to mirror to them what I see in you, what I celebrate in you, things you're achieving, things that um, you know are quirky about you or challenges for you, that's all the pride, being proud of your child and, and celebrating mm-hmm. who they are. And so basically parents who verbalise that, the kids are miles ahead Mm -hmm. in being able to verbalise for themselves in their own head, their own self-talk, you know, who am I and how do I feel about myself? Right, because that's what I was wondering. Is it it about telling them that Mm. you're proud of them for this action or for that purpose or it's it's about verbalising it and telling them? Yes, yes. It's about giving them that feedback. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you might have one little person and, you know, you might be letting them know, hey, I really love how you were just really kind, you were really, really thoughtful, you were very considerate, really great sharing. And then they say, hey, I'm someone who is kind, I can be thoughtful, okay, I yeah. can do sharing. And then if they flip it mm. and they kind of say, that's me, that's what I can do. Mm. And um, so then next time they come into a situation where they're not, you know, am I going to be okay? They're like, oh, actually, it's okay, I can make that friendship because I am kind. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, can, can, I can cooperate. So it, it's just, it's this incredible ripple effect. And um, what we find is that some parents just are not very verbal. Yep. They don't talk. <coughs> and mm. that's really tough for the kids. Mm. Yeah. I mean, quality talk, right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I get that. Yes. <laughs> Plenty of people will talk about, you know, politics these days. But mm. yeah. So do you, does that yes. all make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. And it's something that you've... And I guess if your parents didn't say it to you, it's not going to be natural for you to then say it to your kids. That's not going to be the first thing on your mind. Mm, mm. I have a lot of adults that come in and and they'll talk about what it was like growing up, you know, different issues that have come up. And, you know, they'll say, you know, I discovered that the, that my dad thought, you know, I was, um, you know, very, in, uh, very I don't know, self-driven and, and able to take responsibility and, and work towards something and that made me feel really great. Fantastic. And, and then they'll say, but the time I found that out is because... You know, he was telling his brother about me. He was telling my uncle about mm. me. He didn't tell He'd me. Tell, yep, okay. Yeah, so that happens as well. Mm. You know, incidentally, you kind of hear mm. it from other people. Mm-hmm. And it's just, um, I, I just think it's just such an incredibly important area to talk about because it's mm-hmm. just missed. People know to love their child. Mm. And then if you think about parenting, they think about how to discipline a child and how to kind of, you know, bring mm. them up. 
but they don't really necessarily mm-hmm. comprehend the forming of the actual mm. psychology of the child. Mm. Does that make sense? And, yeah, and sometimes life gets busy or, or, or there's another issue going on with the child that becomes more focused than, than that stuff and you forget. Absolutely. You just forget sometimes. Well, yeah, you just get distracted with the, the hecticness of life, really, yeah. hey? Yeah, or you focus on the on other things that aren't, you know, maybe there's something big that's an issue with a kid too or, I don't know, maybe they stole somebody's lunch at school or something like that and so you can focus on that sort of thing and, and the negatives instead of yeah the positives. Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it, to focus yeah. on when there's a problem. You're going yes, to just go bring what, yeah. your attention and you're going to be pretty stressed by it mm. and anxious that the child's not going to learn. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And also I think it's really hard if, if adults haven't had that role modelling from their parents. Yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah. So they don't really – they're not very good at talking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's not – it's just not natural for some people. Mm, definitely. The thought process has to go into it. Yeah. I um, sometimes have parents come in and they're just spe- just particularly not verbal, you know. Mm-hmm. They're not – they don't really communicate and talk much. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a real disconnect with them and the kids. Um, there's problems. And so I might say to them, you know, we need to really get you talking about – um, when you notice things about your children to feed that back to them so that they learn that it's their personality and their strengths. Mm-hmm. And then I get this blank, pe- fearful look from the parent. And then I say, okay, your homework is I want you, you know, you've got two kids, three kids. I want you to write a column for each child and um, to talk about their personality and their strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want you to bring that back for me. And um, what do you think about that as an exercise? I'd enjoy that. Like yeah. That would be – but oh, I just reckon there was probably times when my kids were younger, if, if you had thrown that at me, yeah. I would have struggled mm. and thought, oh, mm. and then felt guilty because I don't take the time to think about it or I wasn't taking the time to think about it. Yep. So it was forefront of my mind. Mm. But just trying to see the good and the positive is what you should be doing. Yep, yep, should absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well – Often what I do is is they bring back the list and either the list is pretty good to go um, because it sort of differentiates between that child compared to another child. Mm -hmm. Um, They might give lots of examples of something they might do, you know. I just gave you some examples of our George boy just then. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, But sometimes the lists are really not good. Um, They're kind of double negatives. So, you know, oh, he's not too bad. (laughs) Oh, Jesus (laughs) (laughs) or you know isn't naughty too often um or what other ones um you know uh you know plays plays soccer but doesn't say play soccer well or play soccer fair or what it is yeah like you know it's part of a team or enjoys um you know really is very competitive or you know very encouraging no so you know again it kind of for them is a really good thing because then I can spend the session drawing them out by asking them questions they have the answers Mm -hmm. you know they know the kid um and but then I get them to write it all down Mm -hmm. and then the next thing I do is I bring their kid in and I get the parent to go through and tell the child all the things that they know about the child and what they celebrate about the child and oh my gosh it's an emotional process Mm, would be yeah so it's really um role modeling for the parent how to celebrate that child and verbalize and the child is hearing their parent and it's just oh you know whoa so would that be would you do that the same way whether it was for little kids or teenagers is there a different way of going about that process depending on the age of the child? Or Great question. So, you know, developmentally we have different chunks of different focuses mm-hmm. and um, so every chunk is important and different. Um, and so, you know, what a teenage needs to hear uh, is very different to what a very, mm-hmm. you know, like a six-year-old mm-hmm. might not yeah. need to hear. So, yeah, absolutely every, is, is every age group chunk is important mm-hmm. for different reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, like a young child is is, you know, very skill-based, um, whether they're able to do things on their own type of thing, um, very broad sort of language, mm-hmm. you know. Um, you know, so it might be, 
Uh, they had to they had to go and play in a playground, which is now the next grade up, and there's big kids there, so that was very brave, you know, that, yep, sort, of that thing. sort of thing. Yeah, whereas older kids, it is, you know, you have really tough days and you can, um, you know, when, when you hear something mean about yourself, you can understand that it's the other person is wanting to, is having their own issues, mm-hmm. so they're wanting to take it out on you or cut it down or, mm-hmm. or you understand you're upset and but you also understand that that's going to pass. So it's really kind of very advanced mm. type of oh, and it's interpersonal intricate. skills. Yeah. So yeah. I've got I've got the 15 almost 15 year old daughter at the moment. Yeah. And um we try and try and be very 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 positive with her because it's a difficult time. Yeah. Um it is, isn't it? We'll be honest though, lost my shit this morning in the car. <laughs> <laughs> was not mother of the year on the way to school this morning. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. Because, <laughs> um, you know, it's just hard to remain that calm, <laughs> that calm, calm. positive person. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it's really hard. And and just the intricacies of getting her to see how s- some people's reactions are not what she thinks it is. And she is you – know, that, that I'm proud of her that she can see – she can see for what it is and she can try and navigate it and work it out without mm. resorting to being, um, you know, as, 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 as catty or whatever is what's going on. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is that's, a, that's the conversation that we have. It's, it's an example of what we have it's as a, a teenager. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And that is such an incredible <coughs> strength that she, she comes and brings that to you and you're able to dissect it and you're able to be an extra frontal lobe so that she can try to be rational and try to mm. be objective about it and and really understand that's the messiness of the teenagers around her. Mm. Um, yeah, it's so great, incredible, you know, because that means that she's navigating being a teenager with kind of like a, as a team, you know, you're part of mm. the team. Only so when she wants though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're not always a team, it's just when she chooses to be that team. I won't say who, but I can say with one of our boys driving through the teenage thing, uh, it was this conversation of, you know, buddy, do you think the hormones are raging right now? You know, do you, are you mm. feeling a bit hormonal? And, you know, you'd be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I love I love that. Yep. I love that, yeah. No, I personally think, I mean, as you know, um, our boys are 8, 10, 16, 18 and 21 at the moment. I can't believe your baby is 8. I know. Gorgeous George. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. eight. Yep. He looks about, oh, how old? He looks about 12, I think. Yeah. Mm. But um, so I've been through those ages, parenting, mm. and I can tell you I really do think the hardest ages are 15, 16. Mm-hmm. Mm. Easy, easy. Well, my eldest has just turned 17 and touch a bit of wood, I feel like we might have just turned a tiny bit of a bend a corner <laughs> towards the light perhaps towards the somewhere light. it's there <laughs> it's a cruel time it really is and isn't that so critical when they're teenagers they are just few, like overwhelmed with insecurity of you know do I belong am I okay mm. I'm different to other people but mm. I also want to be my own person um, what's my future going to mm. be? What am I capable of? And all of that comes down to self-talk. I was going to say that that just ties back in with the, exactly. the conversation you're having with them exactly. when they're smaller mm. to build the foundation to handle yeah. those yeah. those years. It's like through their life you're just putting in these little pebbles, pebbles, mm. pebbles, pebbles, and they all accumulate into this boulder of confidence. And um, it's just such an incredibly important area. So. So, you know, beautiful parents out there, please, 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 if you have a, if you have a, a um, thought about your child with what they, their strength are or what they're achieving in that moment, um, you know, you just have that warm fuzzy or you just see them, you really see them for who they are, mm. tell them, say it. Is it worthwhile? So, uh, bringing this all back to me because it's all about me. Uh, and yeah, we'll do that. Okay. So, teenagers don't like talking. So... You know, you, I think you, I think of a teenager, you know, skipping, you know, with yeah. skipping rope, you have to kind of wait until it's the right moment to enter. Yep, yes, exactly, yes. <laughs> and if you go at the wrong time, you get whipped. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit like that. Yeah. You've got to pick your moment and it sure as hell can't be when it suits you, mm, you know. Mm, it's mm. often really late at night when you're really, really tired because that's when they pop up and they're ready to talk. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just have to go with their timing. And so I really like the approach of... Um, uh, you know, approach and check, and if it's not warm and warm and kind of 
bringing you in. Mm-hmm. Don't go there. Don't go there, but let them know, hey, I'm here. Let's mm. talk if you want. No worries. Yep. Or I can tell you're not quite right, but when you're ready. And then when they come to you, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Put it down because it's this very rare, precious window. It's a small window of opportunity. Yeah, and they have a fire in their belly and um, it's an opportunity, but also if you don't match them in that moment, they're far less likely to come to you and they're also going to take great hurt from mm. that. You know, so, you know, teenage years, it's, it's, um, oh, it's famous, isn't it, for yes. a reason. Um, and also what's really interesting is a whole other topic. Mm. Oh, how can we bring that in? Um, so with children, young children, um, they need to be enmeshed with their parent. Like, you know, um, I am, I, my, who my mum is, who my dad is, that is a big part of who I am. And they're very dependent on the parent to to just be okay Mm -hmm. um and then when a teenager is kind of you know morphing into being their own person they're really needing to go and individuate and become their own person we've talked about a mission um and so there needs to be conflict to create separateness and difference and so on top of their issues with regard to um you know, who am I, am I okay, and all the insecurities, they're also needing to actually have conflict with you. They, oh, good. They, <laughs> they actually need that as oh, an exercise <laughs> to kind of just say, you're there, I'm here, and to I'm different from you, and I need conflict from you. So that's the car this morning was good then. That was... <laughs> <laughs> tick <laughs> yeah so it's really interesting they actually need that um that conflict and it's, it's unavoidable i personally have had a really really um smooth run um relatively mm-hmm. but I, I haven't missed any of it i haven't skipped any of it it's, it's definitely happened you know mm. um Lockie won't mind me telling you everyone this one um i remember one time when he was i think he was 16 and he came to me and he said oh mum Harry's potato. Harry's mum. She makes potatoes better than you, and that was he, he had this kind of attitude of like sassiness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. and, and I said, "Yeah, I agree." And he was like, oh, <laughs> oh, "You know," and um, and I said, "I oh, was that you know." Actually, I don't think I was that gracious. I did have a moment of being upset, but <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and, and I could identify in that moment. He he needs to just disagree with me. Now mm. that's a really pathetic example. Mm. I could give you much better ones, but we won't go there. <laughs> but I could actually see what he was doing in real time as yes. he did it, you know. Yep. Yeah, no, I don't think I was th- – I don't think my sense of humour came later. Do you know what I got today? What? This could be completely off subject. Mm. But um, our daughter loves her dad going to watch her at sports carnivals and cross-country carnivals and yeah. turns into a little girl again because dad's coming. Mm. Sports carnival tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Would you like me to come? No, no, thanks, Mum. No, you're right. <laughs> no, said, thanks, Mum. Really? Oh, it's not cool. And I said, well, am I that embarrassing? No. Like, you, obviously I am. <laughs> are you embarrassing? No, I don't know. Like, obviously I am. Hey, sweetie, kiss, kiss, kiss. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Our 10-year-old doesn't even want me to give him a hug when he goes to school camp for a week. Yeah, see, I just, was she like, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, you, you, yeah she's being too cool. And I think so, and yeah. but but I want to know what's so uncool about me. Yeah, I see. That's my issue. Isn't it? I just I just think your mum's there all the time, so then she gets a bit complacent. Whereas dad mm. isn't there all the time, so it's novelty, different mm. rules. It's unfair. Yeah, I was a daddy's girl, so I kind of get it. Were you? Yeah, but still crushes me just slightly, yeah. a little bit. So you're going to turn up, right? No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> red gonna shirt. Give her her privacy. Yeah. Oh, she's gorgeous. Because I tell her about the story about when my mother, when I was at a school social in high school, and it was very – school socials were my life, right, because I was social height. And I've walked out of the school social into the front foyer of the venue. Mm, highly self-conscious moment. Holding a boy's hand. Yes. And there's my mother in her slippers oh. and house track suit – waiting to escort me to the car. So we just made brief eye contact and I just pretended I didn't know her and kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> so that must have just crushed her. <laughs> okay, so parents don't turn up to the school in pyjamas. No. I've seen no. that. Time. Anyway, sorry about that. That was just a bit of me. No, no, it's good, it's good. Okay, so mm. basically everybody, lots of, lots of verbalising. Mm. It has to be authentic though. 
has to be authentic. Oh, they'd suss it if it wasn't. Don't say, you know, that you're the best drawer in the world and, mm. you know, you're going to be an Olympic runner. I mean, it's possible, but, yeah, keep it real. All right, everybody, thank you so much. So parenting, pride and love, not just love, and you're going to, everyone, jump on and subscribe. That would be great. To this podcast, she means. Yes, that would be good. And um, she's got the six books out, and this is book five. This, is, this would have been yeah, covered parenting. in book yeah, five. Yeah, parenting, there you go. So, you know, that's the right, everyone. for Living book series, that's what this is all about. <laughs> um, and if you want to find Kirsten, she's kirstenhunterauthor.com. She's on Facebook, Kirsten Hunter Author, Instagram, Kirsten Hunter Author, Twitter, Kirsten Hunter AU. YouTube channel is Psych in Your Car, and you've been listening to Signposts for Living with Dr. So Kirsten well. Hunter. Available where all good podcasts are available there from. There you go. Thank you, darling. No See worries. you later. Bye. Bye.